Part A. Listen to each word. Write the word you hear. One. You mustn't eat junk food. You need to eat healthy food. You mustn't eat junk food. You need to eat healthy food. Two. I might not change tomorrow's appointment with the doctor. I might not change tomorrow's appointment with the doctor. Three. Have you got a cough and a sore throat? Have you got a cough and a sore throat? Four. She has to stay in bed. She must not get up. She has to stay in bed. She must not get up. Five. Tina has red spots all over her body. She could have chicken pox. Tina has red spots all over her body. She could have chicken pox. Six. You might have bronchitis. Let me listen to your breathing. You might have bronchitis. Let me listen to your breathing. Seven. You must not go to work. You're ill and you need to stay at home. You must not go to work. You're ill and you need to stay at home. Eight. Harriet had a sore throat and a fever yesterday. She might be off sick today. Harriet had a sore throat and a fever yesterday. She might be off sick today. Nine. Your leg could not be broken because you can walk.
Your leg could not be broken because you can walk. Ten. I don't have to take any painkillers. I don't need them because I feel better. I don't have to take any painkillers. I don't need them because I feel better. Eleven. Tom should see someone about the pain in his stomach. It might be appendicitis. Tom should see someone about the pain in his stomach. It might be appendicitis. Twelve. My son's wrist is sore and swollen. He fell on it when he was playing soccer. My son's wrist is sore and swollen. He fell on it when he was playing soccer. Thirteen. You must not walk on your broken ankle. It needs time to heal. You must not walk on your broken ankle. It needs time to heal. Fourteen. Got a sore throat. I think I've got tonsillitis. Got a sore throat. I think I've got tonsillitis. Fifteen. Paula has a high temperature. She could have an infection. Paula has a high temperature. She could have an infection. Sixteen. It's the first day of Tanya's vacation today. She doesn't have to go to work. It's the first day of Tanya's vacation today. She doesn't have to go to work. Seventeen. I'm feeling a bit better today, so the doctor might say I can go home tomorrow. I'm feeling a bit better today, so the doctor might say I can go home tomorrow. Eighteen. 
Jill has to go to hospital for an operation, but it isn't serious. Jill has to go to hospital for an operation, but it isn't serious. Nineteen. I really must diet and do more exercise. I want to lose weight. I really must diet and do more exercise. I want to lose weight. Twenty. If someone cancels an appointment, the doctor might have time to see you. If someone cancels an appointment, the doctor might have time to see you. Listening to problem solving. You look tired. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I guess I just had a bad night. I often don't sleep too well. You know, I have some strange dreams. You do? I hardly ever dream. Yeah, I am.、Um, I've had some weird dreams, really weird dreams, and they're scary. They're always scary ones. They're never good ones. They're just weird and off the wall. Like nightmares? Yeah, I have really bad nightmares, and I tend to have dreams that come true every once in a while. I try to be careful. You know the saying: "Don't tell a bad dream before breakfast because it might come true." <laughs> Never heard that. So you tell it after breakfast? Yeah, or sometimes not at all. Question one: How is the man acting towards the woman? Question two: What's been happening to the woman lately? Question three: What does the woman say you should do if you have a bad dream? Now listen to part two. Maybe you should change the position of your bed. Why? How would that help? Well, I've heard that if you sleep with your head to the north, you won't sleep well. Really? Who told you that? My aunt. She'd always been a terrible sleeper, but when she changed her bed to face east, she slept fine. I can't change the position of my bed. My room has a lot of windows, so I can't put my bed against another wall. Maybe that's the problem. Some Native Americans believe that bad dreams come in through your windows. They do? Well, I can't get rid of my windows. 
No, but you could put a dream catcher in a window. Question four. What does the man suggest? Question five. Why can't the woman do what the man suggests? Question six. What do some Native Americans believe? Now listen to part three. You've seen dream catchers, right? They're made of feathers and string and stuff. I've seen them in stores. So have I. Huh. Do you think it would work? Well, it might. They're supposed to catch the bad dreams before they reach you. And I think they look cool. So do I. Okay, I'll get one and try it tonight. Question seven. How has the man helped the woman? Question eight. What will the woman most likely do to solve her problem? Listening to a daily life conversation. So, Eric, how long have you lived in New York? All my life. I was born here. Sounds like you're new in town. Two months. I just moved here from Michigan. Wow, that's a big change. New York must be quite a shock. Well, not exactly. I lived here once before when I went to graduate school. So I, I guess you could say that I'm used to life in New York, if that's possible. When did you live here? Oh, let's see. It must have been about eight years ago. Boy, the city sure has changed since then. I suppose so. I mean, they've really cleaned up Times Square. It used to be so dirty. I mean, now it's just full of tourists. Yeah, and the subway seem to run more on schedule now. Basically, I think the city's safer anywhere you go. Probably because we have so many more police officers on the street. Oh, that's for sure. You know, though, one thing I can't get used to is the noise, especially those garbage trucks. They come at five in the morning and are so loud. The noise wakes me up every time. I guess I've lived here so long I don't hear it anymore. I can sleep through just about anything. You know the one thing I am tired of? The weather. I mean, I'm so sick and tired of these long, cold winters. I'm thinking about moving next year. Really? Yeah. I mean, like I said, I've lived here all my life. And I feel like I need some kind of change. You know, a new environment. It's time to get out of New York. 
Oh, not me. I, I love the nightlife of the theater and the great restaurants. I can't wait to get out and discover all that New York is offering. Question 1. What did the woman do in New York before? Question 2. What changes has the woman noticed in New York? Question 3. What does the man say about Times Square? Question 4. What can't the woman get accustomed to? Question 5. What can't the man stand about New York? Listening for information. Hello, Mike. You're on Talk Tuesday. Hi. Thanks. Uh, I think it's terrible that kids are spending so much time watching TV. That's almost the same number of hours that an adult spends at work, which is awful. I don't have a television. I've never owned one. So you've never had a TV? No. And I think everyone with children should get rid of their TVs. The problem is that, well, first of all, all the commercials, all the advertisements for toys, for junk food, kids shouldn't be watching those. Secondly, I don't want my kids to identify with actors on TV. What's important is that they see real people as role models. You know what I think? A child who spends 10,000 hours reading, doing a sport, or learning a hobby will learn something. A child who spends 10,000 hours watching television learns nothing, which is just a waste of time. Mike, thanks for calling in. Michiko is next. Hi. 
Thanks for taking my call. What's interesting is that so many people talk about the negative effects of TV on children. But you know, most parents aren't trained teachers. And it's very helpful to have another way to teach things to children. There are some great TV shows and kids can learn a lot from them. Schools can't teach my kids everything. If I want them to learn Spanish, and there's no Spanish teacher at their school, who's going to teach them? I don't speak Spanish, so I let them watch TV shows in Spanish, which I think is great. Thanks for calling, Michiko. Next, we have Angelo. Hi, Angelo. Yeah, hi. Um, it's interesting that so many people are so concerned about TV. I don't really understand it. I mean, really, it's just common sense. If you don't like a certain TV show, which happens, then don't let your kids watch it. You don't have to get rid of your TV. And if you think a show is okay, then let your kids watch it. You know, experts claim that kids watch too much TV. But it's clear that TV has been around for a long time and we have a lot of very intelligent people around who grew up watching it. So, I'm not sure there's really a problem with TV. Thank you. Question 1. What comparison does Mike make? Question 2. Why does Mike say that TV viewing is bad? Question 3. What does Michiko say can be a benefit to watching television? Question 4. What is Michiko's standpoint? Question 5. What is Angelo's standpoint? Question 6. Why does Angelo say that there isn't a problem to watching TV? Listening to a news item. New research shows that having a pet dog can help to reduce children's stress. 
A study by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in the USA shows that petting a dog is a great way to help stress kids. Researchers looked at 643 children aged 6 and 7 over an 18-month period. They found that children who have a pet dog suffer from less stress than children without a dog. The researchers said that just 12% of the children with pets showed signs of stress. This compares with 21% of children with no dog. The research will come as no surprise to the parents of children who have a dog. They have always known that a dog is great for helping a child's development and mental health. A researcher said there are many things about the research that she is still unclear about. She said she did not know if less anxious children have pet dogs or if it is the other way around and pet dogs make children less anxious. She said the research just showed a link between pet dogs and children's stress. She said pet dogs help children start conversations. This can often be difficult for children to do and can cause them stress. The researchers also said a pet dog can be a source of comfort for children. The dog can also act as a friend to a small child who tells the pet all his or her secrets and stories. Sometimes a dog is so important that its name can be the first word the child speaks. This is Noreen Lam reporting from Spain.